Hey, let's see the live footage first, and then I'll provide my analysis of the game after the live footage. And I'm going to try my level best not to violate the copyright rules by adding my own commentary and making this video to be unique. All right, so here we go. Kasparov with white pieces, and it begins with e4, then c5 by Enigma. What variation is Kasparov thinking of playing against the Sicilian? Well, let's see. Okay, there we see knight to f3 by Kasparov and knight c6 by Enigma. I guess we're going to see the Rosolimo attack here. Bishop b5 and pawn to e5. So the Rosolimo attack, technically speaking, resembles the ruler of pace, except that black has a pawn on c5. So always keep that in mind. And there we see Kasparov castling short and bishop d6 by enigma so this is all theory there's nothing new about it yeah pawn to c3 just preventing knight d4 or knight b4 in some line okay so there we see pawn to s6 by enigma what is kasparov going to do the typical line is bishop a4 and then putting that bishop on c2 later on just implementing everything that we do in the royal of pace so what is kasparov thinking of doing here i guess kasparov is going to take on c6 with his bishop Yep, and he does it because he took so long to think about that. So d takes c6 and pawn to d4 by Kasparov. There he goes for a pawn break right away to open up the position. I guess that's what defines Kasparov. He is an attacking player, so he's always looking for quick attacks in an effort to simplify the game. And it seems like Enigma is out of his prep already because he's taking a bit of time here to figure out what is happening on the board, which move he should play next. I guess c takes d d4 is justifiable or simply taking with the e pawn which appears to be a better move in my eyeballs so let's see what enigma is going to do in this position all right so there we see c takes d4 c takes d4 and now it is up to enigma to think of what to do next with that pawn on d4 should he take it or maybe go for the kingside castle oh there we see bishop g4 and d takes e5 by kasparov now attacking the bishop oops enigma needs to be very careful if bishop takes e5 is going to lose a piece because it looks like kasparov has an in-between move queen takes d8 check and then win the black bishop so bishop takes f3 and queen takes f3 by kasparov then yeah bishop takes e5 so that's a nice simplification by enigma there we see knight d2 by kasparov just developing a minor piece that was doing nothing at the back rank so let's see what enigma is going to do here i guess he's supposed to start developing his his king side pieces in order to put his king to safety okay so there we see queen f6 by enigma begging for a queen exchange but kasparov says no and he plays queen b3 attacking the undefended pawn on b7 what is enigma going to do okay pawn to b5 and i was thinking enigma was just going to cast along but anyways knight to f3 by kasparov so what is enigma going to do here maybe develop the knight to e7 oh maybe kasparov is planning to play bishop g5 next attacking the black queen which is on f6 or probably just taking up the g5 square but maybe enigma can stop that idea with something like pawn to h6 i don't know because developing the knight on e7 okay so there we see pawn to h6 maybe stopping the move bishop g5 so that now enigma can play knight e7 that's what i was about to say so now it is up to kasparov to come up with a different idea probably a better one and it's interesting when you see kasparov taking his time to make a move just know there is something more extraordinary coming and here it seems like there's no game on the king's side i can see kasparov looking on the queen's side yep he has played pawn to a4 going for a minority attack as quickly as possible and 97 is played then ab and cb now stockfish in this position seems to favor kasparov not because he's the former world champion but because of his dominant position who oh, a queen sacrificed by kasparov and now you can see enigma shaking his head together with his eyeballs while moving his elbow from left to right thinking of what to do next yet that was a surprise so Kasparov decides to give up a queen for two rooks. For example, if a takes b5, Kasparov is going to take with check on yep. So rook takes a8 check and now he is looking forward to winning another rook which is on h8 because black here cannot block with his knight. So king d7 now kasparov is thinking what to do next i guess there's no any other move apart from taking the rook on h8 which appears to be free so there we are speaking of two rooks against the black queen versus knight and knight and bishop against bishop 
Kasparov zooms in with his eyeballs, looking for a better continuation after Rook takes h8. I mean, there appears to be no any better move apart from Rook takes h8. What is Kasparov doing here? Scratching his head before making a move. Okay, Rook takes h8. There yeah, we see it. And Enigma plays knight c6. Now, this is where we see good players, you guys. Kasparov has no queen, but can he manage? to maintain his better position all right so there we see pawn to b3 clearly kasparov is keeping his pawns for the end game and he doesn't want to lose any of them g5 by enigma attacking the rook on h8 but knight takes e5 by kasparov that comes with check so enigma has got no time to capture kasparov's rook on h8 he needs to attend to kasparov's check first before playing anything else and i guess the only move is for enigma to take the knight first and yep there we see it and rook b8 by kasparov now attacking the pawn on b5 what is enigma going to do now when you're playing without the queen on the board peace coordination and king safety is key you need to coordinate your pieces very well so that they protect each other at all times and another hint i can give you in this position Kasparov needs to connect his rooks as quickly as he can to stop black from capturing any of the rooks and every piece must defend every piece so let's see. I guess Enigma is looking for a way to capture one of Kasparov's rooks. But there we see Queen C6 attacking Kasparov's pawn on E4. So Kasparov must do something about that pawn or maybe play something else. Okay, so there we see Bishop E3 allowing Black to take the E4 pawn so that Kasparov can now take the pawn on B5. Well, that's a clever decision by Kasparov. So hoping to see Queen takes E4 and Rook takes B5. Yep. Now, Rook takes b5 and Kasparov still maintains his advantage. Position still unclear as to what Black should do here. Maybe he should start thinking of pushing the king side pawns and try to mess up Kasparov's pawns on the king side or just going for a quick attack to get rid of the dark squared bishop. But that will be an end game of two rooks versus the queen, which can result into a draw, but no, because of the passed pawn along the b file. So this is a critical position and Enigma has to be careful. Okay, so there we see knight g4 and rook d1 checked by Kasparov. What is Enigma going to do next? His king is under attack. He needs to secure it. Maybe play something like king e7 or king e6. The king has to be closer to the queen and knight in order to balance this game up. Otherwise, you don't want to let your king go far away from the queen. Okay, so there we see king e6 and rook back to d1 by Kasparov, setting up for a nasty pin after the dark squad bishop goes away. So Enigma has to be very careful here. What is he going? Going to do i mean he's taking a bit of time here so confused he cannot take the bishop with his knight because kasparov is going to take back with a rook rook takes e3 and the queen will be pinned to the king so enigma has to play something else okay and there we see king back to d7 by enigma it's now up to kasparov to decide what he's going to do next and he needs to ensure that his pieces are well coordinated oh there we see point to h3 and knight takes e3 rook takes e3 attacking the queen queen b1 check and king h2 queen f1 attacking the rook and the pawn Rook f5 by Kasparov protecting the f2 pawn and Enigma plays h5 maybe trying to go for the king side pawn storm now Kasparov takes on f7 with check and king c6 what is Kasparov going to do maybe Kasparov is going to make a mistake due to time pressure and Enigma may come back into the game but anyways rook f6 check and king c7 then Kasparov goes for rook e7 king d8 and rook g7 what is Enigma going to do time is ticking and maybe we're going to see a mid oh finally the match comes to an end and both players shake hands. What an exciting match between the two players. And always good to see Kasparov doing his Kaspar things. Now let me just quickly tell you what makes this match to be so interesting. First of all, who is this guy, Ray Enigma? Well, the truth is nobody knows, at least at the time of this recording. So this guy is arguably the most mysterious player in the world because his identity is unknown. You know, one thing is for sure, Ray is a master at chess. So nobody knows who this guy is. He wears a unique clothing when playing chess. And interestingly, he gained his fame after managing a draw against the former world champion, Anatoly Karpov on Spain's Got Talent. Well, technically speaking, Karpov lost on time, but the game was decided as a draw due to insufficient material. And what made it look like 
Ray Enigma actually warned was he promised to reveal his identity if only Kapov could win the match. That was tough. So in this Blitz match that was played on June 18th, 2022, I think, Gary Kasparov started with E4 and then Ray Enigma responded with a Sicilian C5. Now, Knight to A3 is what was played. Normal opening move and then Enigma played Knight C6. Simply the old Sicilian Bishop B5. Now, this is called the Rosolimo attack. The basic idea, you guys, is to capture the Queen's Knight on C6 and argue that Black's pawn structure on the Queen's side is messed up. E.g. if black plays pawn to e6, there's a line where white can take on c6 and according to theory, black has to take back with his b pawn, not the d pawn. So b takes c6 and then instead of playing pawn to d3 or castle short, white can play pawn to e5 to try and limit black's moves. So the pawn on e5 is stopping black from developing normally with knight f6 and also stopping black from playing bishop d6 which they like doing in the rosolimo attack and i'll show you the idea is that if they play pawn to d5 white can even take with n percent and now you can see the whole idea of taking the knight on c6 to leave black with this long-term weakness the doubled isolated pawns along the c file e.g if bishop takes d6 now white can just simply cast short and continue with life and you may argue this is a bad position for black so that's the basic idea in the rosorimo attack anyways enigma played pawn to e5 in his position just playing normally and now just to let you know bishop takes c6 in this position it's not really a good choice because black can take with his deep pawn anyways and you might think knight takes e5 wins a pawn but queen d4 will win back the pawn with tempo and this is the same tactical shot that we see even in the Rui Lopez. So this is the easiest way of learning how to play the Rosolimo attack you guys. It's like playing the Rui Lopez against the Sicilian defense. Anyways after pawn to e5 Gary Kasparov simply castled short because that's what you're supposed to do and now if black plays a careless move like a6 white can safely take on c6 and win a free pawn on e5 since the king is already on g1 this is why enigma played bishop d6 so you can see these guys are playing theory in the opening stage they don't play crazy gambits or tactics which is one thing you should learn from these super gms and other grandmasters bishop d6 protects the e5 pawn even though it looks like black is blocking his d pawn or sitting in front of his d pawn well this is very normal in the rosolimo attack so pawn to c3 is what Gary Kasparov played. It stops Black's knight from sitting on d4 or b4 whatever and also supports the upcoming pawn to d4 pawn push e.g. a6 was played in the game and here Kasparov made the first imbalance. The theoretical move here is to play in the style of the Rui Lopez. You play bishop a4 and find a way of putting your queen's knight on a5 by putting it first on g3. Anyways. So bishop takes c6 is what Gary Kasparov played. Enigma took with the deep on, after which Kasparov, being an attacking player, immediately played pawn to d4 to try and open up the game in the center. That's what attacking players do. So c takes d4 was played and Gary Kasparov took back with a c pawn. The game is about equal. Then Enigma played bishop g4. So he took on e5 attacking the bishop and this is how tricky Gary Kasparov can be. The idea here is that if bishop takes e5 first this was going to be a blunder cause of an in-between move queen takes d8 check and after rook takes Gary was going to be up a piece. A full piece ladies and gentlemen. That's why Enigma here took some time to think what am I going to do? The best move according to Stockfish was to play bishop c7 but enigma took on f3 anyways and promptly gary took back on f3 even though stockfish likes the move queen takes d6 and after bishop takes e4 queen b4 attacking the bishop and the pawn on b7 i mean just putting a lot of pressure this is what stockfish wanted gary kasparov to play gary instead took on f3 and then enigma went on to take on a5 and after knight d2 enigma played queen f6 now queen f6 begs for white to exchange queens which was going to be good for black. You guys just because your opponent offers a queen trade or a peace exchange it doesn't mean you need to accept it. If Gary took on f6 he was only going to help 
black to develop the knight which was doing nothing on g8. That's why queen b3 was played by Gary attacking the pawn on b7. b5 by Enigma knight to a3. So with knight to a3 maybe some possibilities of bishop g5 was going to come which is why Enigma played h6 but hey what's Gary Kasparov if there is nothing to attack pawn to a4. You guys this is called the minority attack. So this is why you launch your attack on the side of the board where you have a few number of pawns unlike your opponents. So Enigma played knight e7 in an effort to castle short and start playing chess. But here comes Gary Kasparov you guys it takes b5 allowing enigma to take back on b5 so he played queen takes b5 because he saw an opportunity to sacrifice his queen for two rooks now this is top class chess you guys after a takes b5 gary kasparov took on a8 and as checked so king d7 was played and then he took the next rook so now kasparov has two rooks for a queen okay in case you don't know what is happening here black's dark squared bishop can be traded with white's bishop on c1 okay and black's knight on e7 can later on be traded with white's knight which is on f3 if played correctly so this is the vision that you need to develop when making such decisions so here is the top hint that i'm giving you guys one thing you should keep in mind is peace coordination and your king safety so peace coordination and king safety is the key after you give up your queen and you must try to create a fortress in order to hide your king from any possible chance